Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets webinar. Today's focus is on wave analysis, and in fact, the story behind it. We will take a look at the complex corrections and momentum. This time, even more emphasis, in fact, on the complex corrections. Uh, it was a special request from one of our traders, and I think it's a great topic because, indeed, often enough, you see if you if you see corrections, if you see wave analysis uh, by uh, starting traders, intermediate traders, then Complex corrections are often where it goes wrong. It's difficult to, get, to tie together various legs and swings into a coherent wave analysis. So we want to focus on explaining what corrections make sense and which ones do absolutely not make sense. All right. We will try to clarify that in this webinar, but we're going to do it in a way that you know we don't have to be expert wave analysis to understand this. We want to keep it light and, and simple in a way so that even, let's say, light recreational users of the waves uh, will still be able to do so and will still be beneficial for them. I am definitely a fan of uh, wave analysis in a, in a practical sense, not in a very theoretical debate where, you know, a ton of wave counts are compared. I think Wave analysis is great for supporting your understanding of the market structure, but it shouldn't get too uh, too heavy and too complicated. All right, especially for trading purposes, that is. All right, so first of all, though, the risk disclaimer uh, and uh, this disclaimer, it explains that the, the webinar and later on recording is shown to a global audience but may not be suitable for everyone. Take a look at admiralmarketsglobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact the appropriate entity for more information on that. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange in global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of independent financial advisor for more information on that. This live webinar and later on recording is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. Great folks, thank you so much. Today it's only me, Nanet, uh, is is not a, a wave analyst a user he's focusing on technicals and a bit of fundamentals so it's going to be only me first of all before we kick off uh two small messages uh, quickly you can join the zero to hero uh course just go to the website at homemarkets.com and click on register for free if you don't see it anymore perhaps you're looking at this video uh, a couple of months later then just contact customer service or uh, just to maybe browse the website. I'm sure you'll be able to still find that course. Also, good news, uh, Admiral Markets was voted the best Forex educator in 2016 uh, by the Forex Awards in the UK. Uh, that uh, same organization gave Admiral Markets last year the best MT4 Broker Award. This year, Admiral Markets won the best Forex educator, so we're very happy uh, with that. This is a picture here of that award ceremony in, uh, in London, so we were very happy with that. All right, so if you would share that, of course, that would be absolutely great. Let's talk a bit about uh, some building blocks first. As you know, the rhythm behind the Forex market or, or any market, of course, uh, basically any financial market, is uh, momentum and correction. All right, momentum versus correction is the heartbeat, the heart rhythm as the, you know, the heart goes like this, doo doo doom right Some, something like that in any case I'm not a hard expert here but something like this so basically the flatness is the correction and when the price moves up and down or the this beat moves up and down those are the parts of momentum so ironically we don't only see it in, in markets but we see that in other things such as the heartbeat and that doesn't surprise me I consider the market to be basically a similar object as a, a, a natural object like for instance water and and mountains where the stream of water finds the path of least resistance that's how I see price moving uh, throughout time so with that said we have these two things momentum and correction we talked about both of them in previous webinars but very quickly momentum is where there is a leg a swing where candles are pushing strongly into one direction either bullish or bearish so 
basically uh, bullish or bearish momentum. We'll see candles uh, that have majority of the candles are uh, are in that direction. So let's take an example of bullishness. Here, the majority of these candles are bullish. The majority, the bullish candles are quite large, relatively large compared to some of these bearish candles, and the candle closes are near the high. So as you can see on the left left lower corner here, this upside is an example of a bullish momentum. Correction is quite the opposite. The candles are mixed, the candles are smaller, the closes are not necessarily near the, the high or low, so they're more indecision. Here you can see that overall on the right lower corner, the price is going sideways. Overall, this is a correction. Both these momentum and corrections are basically the pillars what we use in identifying a trend and range. In a trend, price would be making basically upside momentum, sideways correction, upside momentum, and overall, it will basically be making a channel. That is a trend. That trend consists of multiple pieces of swing, basically either corrective or momentum. You see that? Correction, of course, is would be the same, but then it has a flat angle, as you can see here, sideways. So that's a quick review. We've talked about these concepts before. Now, what's the, the thing, the, the, you know, the idea behind waves? So basically, it's connecting these swings. We might be trading part of these swings, right? Trying to catch a part of the swing, impulsive swing, or trying to... Uh, try to trade a turn of a correction and hope that that will be the, the start of a new swing, a, a continuation of the previous, for instance, something like this, right? Price is in a downtrend. We're seeing a correction like this. And if we take a trade here, we don't know this is still correcting, but as soon as it starts to move lower, that could be indeed the start and the confirmation of a new bearish momentum. So we're connecting these swings. This is one swing. This is a second swing. Here's a third swing. Bearish momentum, bullish correction, bearish momentum. So we're connecting these swings. And maybe before that, there was bullish momentum, right, with bearish correction and yet another bullish momentum. So we can go back as far as we want. Of course, that wouldn't make much sense. We only want to look at a, a piece of history that is relevant for the decisions we are making now, logically, right? But uh, yes, we can go a reasonable way back and, and understand the flow of these swings and identify these swings and say, okay, this is a swing, that is a swing, and understand their character and then start to compare these swings with each other. This is at the heart, you know, the, the, the key, the fundament of wave analysis. We're connecting swings and we're building a storyline. Once we have a storyline in place, all right, then we start thinking about what the next chapter could be, what could be the next part of this story. So as every story, of course, has chapters and even parts, perhaps, uh, the wave analysis has that too. So we're trying to identify that and connect them and make an idea about what is next. Now, people... Generally speaking, love stories, right? Somehow, it's not as popular, perhaps, as other tools like price action and technical wave analysis, a uh, technical analysis, sorry. Uh, now, the reason, I'm not sure. It's ironic because I would think that actually it would be very, very popular. Now, I'm not saying it's not popular. There's certainly a good number of traders using this. Uh, but perhaps from this perspective, if you think about how, how stories have been so popular throughout the ages, it's been the first, of course, communication method that we've used as humans. We didn't have writing, uh, you know, thousands of years ago, 10,000 of years ago. Uh, so our, our way of communicating danger, history, was through stories, was through the written word, uh, the spoken word, sorry. So from that perspective, interesting that it's not even more popular in a way. I think that it could be because obviously there are it's it's a, it's a concept that requires a lot of practice and a lot of training and from that perspective may be difficult to to continue and show the persistence 
maybe also um, other things are simpler. And I do think that sometimes traders and people in general, by the way, like to find as many shortcuts as they can. And yeah, it's it's this requires time, definitely. This requires some effort to practice it. And yeah, you got to take it step by step, get better at it. But I think that I'll show you some shortcuts I think that make sense to to implement and allow you to become a better wave analyst one step at a time. All right. Now, of course, these shortcuts are not miracles, but I do think that uh, it allows traders to be to focus on the practical part uh, rather than over focused on the theory, let's say. Uh, all right. So the next step, all right, is to realize that when we start to think about these swings, whether they're bullish, bearish, corrective, impulsive, we're building the storyline, I was saying, right? Remember? So we got the storyline uh, in mind. Uh, but the next step when you really want to do wave analysis would be to label those swings. That's when you really start to do wave analysis. Uh, that's basically the moment where you say, okay, this is, as you can see in the, in the chart, I have here a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, an ABC. You've probably heard of these terms before. Uh, this is the psychology. You're basically interpreting the psychology behind those movements, the psychology of the market, the psychology of price. You're doing that by labeling it uh, numbers and letters. Those le numbers represent impulse moves. Uh, the letters represent corrections. When you identify a swing as corrective bullish or bullish momentum or bearish corrective or bearish momentum, you would use one of you know one of these symbols. What do you think belongs best to it? Now that at start might take some time to recognize what belongs where, what is correct and what isn't. There are rules and guidelines connected to this. Uh, we've had webinar before explaining some of those rules of webinars, so I refer to that. Uh, in the, you just have to go to YouTube channel, youtube.com, search for Admiral Markets, find the Admiral Markets YouTube channel, and then look for a WAVE webinar. But generally speaking, though, uh, I'll, I'll give you some rules, but there are a lot of guidelines that make you, you know, make your analysis better. All right. And some rules that cannot be broken. Now, once you do this, that's when you start implementing wave analysis. Now, you don't have to do it, mind you, as, let's say, expanded as I do. You don't have to do it, first of all, because you can find it on the website of Admiral Markets, and you can use that for, uh, perhaps, uh, for supporting your analysis. Um, that's one point. You don't have to do it with, in general, either, because, basically, uh, you can just use the concept when it's convenient, when you think, okay, does it make sense to to analyze it here? So you can only focus on the parts where uh, you are curious, where you want more supportive or uh, contrarian information. You know, the fact that maybe here there's a certain wave analysis maybe does not have any influence here. So you can just do the, the relevant part. That's what I mean with practical stuff as well. All right, so that that saves time. That also avoids confusion. By the way, Nathan says, uh, part one, part two, indeed. Uh, thanks for looking that up, Nathan. Now I remember that is indeed, it was in August last year, 2015. August 6 and 13. Thank you so much, Nathan. Great, great, for, great info there. Hamad is asking, how much is important to learn the wave theory? Uh, please compare technical with waves. And, well, you know, what you find more important really depends from trader to trader. From my perspective, I probably would say, I don't know, 40, 60, 40 for wave, 60 for technical. I wouldn't say it's 50, 50, probably because I think I still use more other aspects like fibs and I use trend lines and moving averages. Um, for long term, I would say it is probably more than 50-50. I would say waves are the over, what probably the main source. For shorter time frames, I would probably say a tad less. So it also depends on the time frames. 
For longer, I would say waves are above 50. It could be waves of maybe even 70. It's difficult to say exactly. Um, for short term, I probably would be also more emphasizing indicators, especially if I go down to 5 and 15 minute chart. But yeah, it's still, uh, still always a part of my analysis. Uh, but yeah, for, for easy sakes, we can say 50-50. So, now, regarding how important it is to learn the wave analysis, uh, wave theory, it depends how much you want to use it. If you really like it, it's useful to learn it because you'll get better at it. And if you like it, then knowing more will give you more, will give you better, you know, better wave analysis and you'll enjoy it more. So if you like it, you know, do as much as you want, basically. If it's more for practical purposes, then knowing the rules is, is important. You don't want to break the rules there, a few rules. Knowing some guidelines is, is good. All right. What can we use wave analysis for? Hamad already beat me to it. He says he thinks it's the best for direction locator. I agree. Absolutely uh, great for that. And it's, it's a great to understand the market structure and understand what the, what the long-term direction uh, could be. All right. So from that perspective, a lot of traders start out, they maybe, you know, they start out with a lucky streak and I bump into these stories and I think, okay, this is dangerous because the trend is over and it's easy, relatively easy when you're trend trading and you're starting out. Uh, you don't have the, the fear yet. So if you're lucky, you can just keep riding that trend. And if you're lucky, you might win a bit, right? But then the trend ends. You don't know why. That trader doesn't know why. The trader um, doesn't understand the market structure. Loses, of course, that profit and more uh, during the turnaround. So understanding the, the wave just gives a better gives the trader a better understanding of the entire market structure and makes the trader independent, really, right? There are so many traders out there looking for signals, looking for a setup right now, one trade idea right now, and that might help once, but it doesn't kind of set you free. I'm not saying you guys here uh, that are joining this webinar, but other other people, right? It doesn't doesn't push you to to master it yourself. One setup is, is in the long run not going to do much, right? So, wave analysis is a great way to understand more uh, and really get into a better become a better analyst, really. So, yeah, the wave count is a rough idea. It gives you the most likely scenario, but you want to be careful for some pitfalls like avoiding perfection and also not becoming, uh, if you're using wave analysis for your trading, not becoming too kind of reliant. I mean, you don't want to avoid, what could happen is that you filter out too many trades if you're constantly looking for, let's say, a new development in the waves or you might look for a too perfect setup because your understanding of the wave analysis gets to gets so so much better which is good but you might be too hesitant with trading it though that's what you want to be careful with so you want to be careful with hesitating with trading right analysis is one thing but trading is the next so don't lose focus on the trading you want to avoid per perfection you want to keep in mind that the wave count is just for structural guidance giving you a most likely scenario, it's good for trends, it's good for filtering out setups, good for confirming entries, and even skipping uh, certain instruments. Some quick rules, one, two, three, four, basically, uh, wave two cannot break one. Wave one, the start of wave one, the origin of wave one. Wave three is not the shortest, never is the shortest. Wave four should not enter the wave one territory. There are some exceptions for wave one and five. Wave three, indeed, can never, wave four can never enter in wave one. Those are the rules for impulsive. Basically, you see one direction of movement here. Uh, there are some guidelines, like wave two is typically deep, wave four is typically shallow. 
but those are not rules. Corrective waves, and here it's something that I would like to uh, uh, dive into a bit more. After this, we'll take a look at the charts. So basically, ABC typically are zigzags or flats, all right, where we see impulse, correction impulse. ABCDE are triangles. Here, too, it could start off impulsive, but it actually slows down as the price is respecting support and resistance in a contracting triangle. Those are ABCDE. Uh, and then we get into the multiple corrections connected together, which is WXY. Here, we actually connect multiple corrections, multiple ABCs and ABCDs, to tie together uh, into complex corrections. Uh, if you mostly complex corrections are tied together uh, when you start out swings that do not belong to each other. So if you have difficulty, you know, spotting the, the swing that seems like the best uh, to you, then using the awesome oscillator, for instance, is, uh, is a good help. And we'll dive into that as, as well. All right. So let me, uh, that's something we'll discuss later. Let me dive into the charts right now. All right. Good. So let's start with this dollar yen. Uh, basically, uh, the dollar yen here, as you can see, uh, moving basically recently sideways. There are a lot of pairs, the euro dollar also, that was moving uh, a lot sideways. And uh, we can take a look, for instance, at this piece right here. Let me mark it so you understand what I'm talking about. It's the orange zone, basically, or the space between these two orange lines. All right. So you can see that the price was making here some downside, but also a lot of corrections. So my perspective on this, when I'm looking at this entire, this piece within the entire, the entire frame here, is that it's a correction. And it's a complex correction. Now, why is that? Because I see multiple, basically, uh, swings uh, that are part of this correction. One swing I see is here. One swing I see is here. And another swing I see is here. So there are three parts that bring price back uh, to the bottom here and back to the retesting the support level. So this is where we can basically label these three swings as a correction. Now, to me, when we probably would dive into a one-hour chart, there's a good chance that this looks like an ABC zigzag. You see a three wave there on this time frame. That is one. Here, we see basically price making some kind of flat correction as well, uh, most likely a, uh, an ABC flat. Uh, correction running flat probably because the top and the bottoms are broken as you can see like this all right that that's a running flat so if we tie that together basically we can see that that is uh, a corrective this has the first one ABC has bearish impulse the second one is basically a sideways correction and the third one also is a bearish impulse right so from this perspective uh, it's really not so important whether this is an A, B, C itself, or rather a W, X, Y. Point is, though, that overall it's a bearish correction relative to this push up. All right, that's why I was bullish on the dollar yen. When we look at the dollar yen, we see a one, two, three, four, five motion. So that is basically a bullish impulse. A five wave move like this can be the end of a bullish part, but only in an ABC. And we don't have anything before that that shows that. So this is the start, either the start of a wave A or a wave 1, which is why I was expecting this to be corrective, because this is either wave 2 or a B. Now, this wave 2 or B, if it was quick, right, if price would have been like this and then bounced here and started to move up, 
then we would have said this is the end of the wave 2B or B. This is once again 1 or A. And we're going up now for 3 or C. But what happened? Price moved down and bounced and started to correct and then moved down again. So what happened was that the initial correction, the part one, got expanded with more corrections. First sideways, then an impulse lower. That's why this turned into a complex correction. That's why I, if I remember correctly, but I can double check what I have in my wave analysis, I consider this to be WXY. Now, it could be ABC. I don't know what... Let me double check what I have this uh, this morning. I don't think it's very, very important, but I just want to show you an example of a complex correction. All right, so there we go. What do we have? Yes, indeed. W, the blue. Look at the blue here. W, X, Y. All right, as you can see, I have it labeled with three ABCs. Uh, I have it here, ABC, I have here ABC, and I have here an ABC. So there are three ABCs, there are three zigzags basically, and together they form the purple wave too. Together they form the complex correction. Now you can see also the upside, five wave, that's the impulse, bullish impulse. The WXY, basically our bearish correction within, or bearish impulsive correction within wave two. Price stopped at 88.6 FIB, which was a very important level. The invalidation level of this wave two is obviously the origin of wave one and the 100% level. If price would have pushed through that, then this downside would be something different. And the wave analysis would have, would have, would have had to change in some way uh, this WXY might have stayed, I don't know, I, you know, but the wave 2 would definitely not be correct, the wave 1 would not be correct. What can you do? Those things happen. Uh, but the point is that tying together corrections like that is, is the way for understanding multiple corrections. Now, I believe that what most of all goes wrong probably is connecting these swings. What is a swing? What is not a swing? Uh, sometimes you just see funny, funny things like, let me see if I can find an example here. Let's dive into the hourly chart. All right. And you might see, uh, let's see, complex corrections that really don't make sense. For instance, you might see uh, this marked as a wave one, two, uh, or, or let me see if I can find something that doesn't make sense. Uh, let's say that someone is marking this as a swing, then marks this as a swing, all the way from here to here, right? This is one swing. You can see that that blue part in relationship to the green part is huge. The green it's small, and do, do you see that this does not make sense? Is that natural to you, or are you hesitant about that? Right, connecting the blue, those blue levels there, just is less, um, fits less within the story. All right, no, no response. So maybe I'll explain it then in more detail. So one thing you can do is add the awesome mouse layer. All right, and that's good because that will show us what part of a swing belongs to, to you know, what part belongs to each other. So for instance, here uh, we can see that on a four-hour chart, at least, look at that. Look, this four-hour piece here, you see that? This is one piece. Why? Because the oscillator, oscillator went down and went back to the zero line. So when that happens, this is one piece. Then the oscillator makes a new dip here. You can see that here, around here, it was oscillating around the zero line. That means that this is one piece. 
And then we make another dip. That means this is one piece. Do you see that these are three pieces? Looking at the oscillator, you might see it a bit better. One, two, three. That's how the awesome oscillator is a great help. Also for impulsive waves. Wave three is the strongest. Wave five shows divergence. So typically you will see price do like this and the awesome oscillator do like this as well. Uh, Sean is saying W shape. You mean that here is weakness, right? That's, that's absolutely correct. There was an 88.6 fib and there was failure to break this bottom after price showed five waves up. The failure to break the bottom basically meant that this is a wave two or B. But within wave two or B, does everyone see that there are three parts within that correction? Does everyone see that? Does, it, does the awesome oscillator help? I just want a quick confirmation here. Otherwise, I'll dive into uh, more details, perhaps. The red circles, are those clear? Okay, I, uh, I guess not. But yeah, it's, uh, if the complex corrections are not clear to you, then try just to use uh, the awesome oscillator um, and try to understand that when you when you see awesome oscillator make a dip like this and go back that that indicates that it's one leg that would help you with uh, with identifying it anyhow if you're really trying to okay two people said yes great so if not just let me know if you have troubles with this try to focus on the impulsive waves and just try try to learn the complex correction step by step, right? Don't 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 overdo it. Don't use it too. Don't use it for trading at first, at least. All right. Uh, regarding the hourly chart, we can see here how this first correction ABC within that ABC, right? We have basically a five wave within C, as you can see here. We have even a five with with A and an ABC within B. All right, within the B part, we have yet again an ABC, A, B, A, B, C here, five waves here, three waves here, five waves there. All right, then we find another ABC down. That's a bit more complicated, this one, but there is a five wave down here and another C part, and now we're starting the upside. So, uh, basically, this is momentum. We got a wave one, two. I got another wave one, two here, and we're looking at a wave three as we speak. So at this moment, these tops are important. That's the top of wave one. When price makes a correction, we would expect a wave four, which should be corrective, a corrective bullish uh, bear, a bull flag. It should uh, be a triangle, and we should expect a break in continuation of a wave five, of a bigger wave three, of a bigger wave three, in my view at least. So this is when impulse is starting. Let's take a look at another complex correction. Your dollar has a lovely one, in fact, um, right here, right? Very complex. Look at that. Sideways zone for very long. So if you see a sideways zone for very long, one thing is good is, uh, is to zoom out one time frame so you see the overall picture. If you see a complex correction on the daily, zoom out and you'll see, you'll understand what's going on in the weekly a bit better. If you see a complex correction on the 15-minute chart, zoom out, for instance, here, zoom out to the hourly chart, so you'll have a better picture of what's going on uh, there. Right? Every time you, you just can't understand what's going on, uh, zoom out, and you'll have a better picture of it. So your dollar is a great example of a complex correction, and uh, it is probably building a triangle. You can see that this part was a swing that belongs to each other. That was the impulsive bearishness, and this is a bullish correction. Now, within that bullish correction, we're seeing different swing, swing highs and swing lows. I classify this as one, uh, this as one, uh, this as one, and now we're in the next. One thing you want to keep an eye on is that these swings 
makes sense in, in the sense like tops and bottoms. All right. Also in time, we see that, you know, this is all kind of about relatively the same kind of length. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. One could be shorter. Sometimes it starts off longer and then becomes, the swings become shorter or it starts shorter and become longer. Uh, that's possible too. But there's harmony in here. You know, if, if one would say, I think that this is a swing and then I think that this is a swing from here to here and I think that then this is a swing from here to here. You can see that does not, there's no harmony in that, right? So that's not a good complex correction. That's not the way to analyze it. And unfortunately, I mean, this is an extreme example maybe, but yeah, there are some examples out there that tied together just weird kind of swings. Most importantly, when analyzing waves is keeping an eye on logical swings. When we, under, when we identify logical swings, we're already halfway there. The next thing is just to, to label it, make the story, and then label it with one, two, three, four, fives, or ABCs, and, and sometimes those WXYs. If you can identify the swings, you're really halfway there, at the least. Also, don't forget that even if you let's say don't label it fully or don't label it, uh, you, you might have a labeling that in retrospect uh, you, you would change or it would be a bit different. It becomes slightly, it does become less important if you identify the swings and understand what is behind those labels. Those labels are very, are very important, of course, for, for me, but if you're not that fanatic in wave analysis, then just using it when it makes sense, just using it to get an understanding of the market structure uh, is enough without really having to dive into all the details and having to know all the nitty-gritty of it. If you love wave analysis and really enjoy it, then you will do that, right? If you don't, you can just use it when it's practical. And the, the fundamental practical part is identifying swings and labeling them uh, impulsive and corrective correctly and then trying to tie that together and then trying to make a forecast and then labeling them. So now that we know that this is part, you can see that we're building probably a contracting triangle, A, B, C, D, E, or have already finished the D or are still in the D. Within the D part, we're making a complex correction. This is the end of C, this is probably D. D could have ended here. For the moment, I think it's still open. So within D, you can see there's a lot of complexity there. Prices are going sideways, lots of up and downs. If you look at the awesome oscillator, we see basically one, two, three, four, five moves. Do you see that? Just looking at the awesome, awesome oscillator. On the price chart, that would look like this, basically. Right? Those are the, the groups. So if we look at those you can see basically three, probably at this moment, the W, X, Y correction within the D. You see that? This is probably one swing, although within that swing, there are three parts you can see here, right? Within that green circle, there are three parts like this, but ultimately, if we look at the entire picture, this, is, this ABC is probably finishing a W, then we see an upside here, like this. That too is three parts, probably ABC2. But if we look at the entire picture, that's probably finishing also one part of the complex correction, which is X. And now price is going sideways, it's going oscillating around the zero line. And that too is probably a correction on its own and could be part of Y. Now let's talk about when that would change. When might uh, the complexity change here? Now if this is a W, X, and we're going for a Y, we would expect price to fall, right? Because we're expecting price to basically complete this correction at a lower spot as it completes this W, X, Y within a bigger triangle of D, remember? So in that case, if we're expecting a Y here, we could expect 
a three wave pattern like that within Y. So from that perspective, this could be an A, this could be a B, and we can expect a C within the Y. So it looks like we're in a B, a red B of, let me make it blue, Y. Now, when would that be invalidated? That would not be valid if price breaks through this origin, most likely. There's still, it could become, if it's a, if it's a zigzag at least, it would definitely be original. Uh, sorry, invalidated, all right? So let me get rid of this. Uh, let me get rid of this here, all right? That's the invalidation spot for the moment. So if price breaks through that, so that's why I have at this moment a fib from here to here. Price respecting the 78.6 fib, so what I'm expecting is price to respect these fibs, not break this origin, this, uh, this spot of origin here, and uh, break these support levels and start moving down like this, maybe correct up again, but then eventually move down again like this, within this Y. If it does break above here, above 113.66 apparently, then, right, it says my audio has been lost. All right. Audio connection restored, it says. I hope you can hear me. So I was saying that if it breaks through this, then something else is going on. In that case, uh, what could happen is that this is one swing, this is another swing. And if it does break here like this, this could become a third bullish swing like that. Do you hear me, by the way? Just testing one, two, three, if you can hear me. All right, so that's when it pushes through pink, this might become something like this. And it might be, become a bit complex correction, but in the opposite direction. It is possible. This could still be a W, this could be still an X. The thing is that this is not an X then here, but an X later. And the X gets shifted into the future. That's what would happen. Now, that might be invalidated, too, if price breaks through this level. In that case, well, then this is not a WX, Y, within D, all right? But the whole triangle is invalidated. Remember, this is C. So if price breaks through C, then uh, we're not having a contracting triangle anymore. All right, so in that case, what will happen if it breaks through this pink line is that this would be considered one swing, this would be considered a swing, and this would be considered a swing, like this. And uh, I would have to take a look here at more price action. What could happen is that this is perhaps a W, this would be considered the X, and we're going up for a Y. In that case, it would make sense to put a fib from here to here. We see a 61.8 fib. And the target would be the minus 272 target up in here. This would be the bullish space that is tradable, I would, uh, I would say, on lower time frames, on four hour probably and uh, an hourly. All right? That's what happens. Uh, it's a complex correction, so we've got to keep an eye on, on the breakout and the, complex, the complexity, the, the wave count might change uh, depending on those breaks and uh, depending on you know, what, what invalidation levels are hit and what confirmation levels or confirmation spots are respected. Uh, on the euro dollar, I, for the moment, consider this to be a wave three bearish impulse. And I consider this to be an A, uh, a B, C, and we're now in a D. Within that D, once again, I think that this is W, X and we're going down for Y, then I would expect this this level not to break. If it doesn't and it does make a, a retracement, then I'm expecting the E. Once that finishes, I expect the downtrend to continue for wave five and we just finish wave four. Uh, considering this is a contracting triangle, as you can imagine, if this is a wave D that's not finished yet, it could take quite a while. The wave X was 10 days. This could still take long. So the overall, before this ABCD is finished, uh, yes, it could be the end of the year. It could be the beginning of this year. It doesn't mean that there are no trades to be found. 
right? There could be a good downtrade here. There could be a good ABC zigzag with an E, and then there could be a good fall. But a break below 105, let's say, I or what is it, 105, I think? Yeah, 105, 20. I'm not expecting uh, this month, at least. Uh, not before the elections in the U.S. Um, and I guess the, the the break to the downside could happen if the Fed, for instance, decides to uh, make the, the rate hike, for instance, right? Uh, so... Yeah, if you if you if you're trading perfectly fine uh, without the wave, great. Uh, if you're trading fine without the wave, but still you would like to understand the market structure, then this could be something for you. I think that it does enhance the market structure understanding tremendously, and uh, I think it does give a lot of info there. Just gotta be practical about it. I think unless you're a big wave fan, it doesn't make sense to go into a lot of wave labeling details uh, if you if you enjoy it you can you know uh, label the waves as you go along uh, and uh, if you just want to use it for practical purposes then only label the waves that are interesting for you and on pairs that have a have a setup perhaps soon or on instruments that you think are close to being triggered or you want to check if, if there are any filters like waves right you have a setup but let me check the waves to see if there's any complex correction going on or if there's any impulse that I can see. Uh, that's how you can practically use it. I think if, if you take it step by step like this, do a bit of labeling at times. Check if it was correct. Check what you can learn from that. Know a few guidelines and, and, and the rules. Then you could really use it very practically, and but not be necessarily uh, a wave analyst. So this is what I'm trying to advocate basically because I get personally annoyed uh, if if traders give up so soon on this. You know, I, I certainly understand that not everyone wants to use it or needs it. So don't get me wrong at that. You know, if you've tried it and it's not for you, fine. But I get annoyed if traders use it, let's say, once and don't give it at least a bit more try. I think that you cannot make an opinion that quickly, I would say. It's, so, it's such a pity, I think, because I think it deserves more attention. I think that it is so beneficial for understanding the market structure, but no real effort goes into it to at least giving it a shot. That's where I'm like, ah, it's a pity. You know, it's, that's where I, my motivation is, my drive is to explain it in a simple way so that more traders, more more analysts use it and it benefits them. So that there's a simple way of using it. So that traders can also see that it doesn't have to be ultra complicated. There are people out there, and wave analysts that have been using waves for uh, very long and you know they like me too, I have a full count. And of course I need to show a full count, right? But I, my, my, my drive here is really to show how, um, uh, you know, how you can use it in a different way, how you can use it in a simple way. Hamad, for instance, right? Shows, sends me great images through Twitter regularly. And does a great job. I really like to see it. I really like the wave count. Uh, focuses on the practical side. I think yes, he has a he has a he has a very substantial wave count. Don't get me wrong, but I do think that he also then again focuses on what really matters and not goes into great detail and and overly expanded, which you know things are might might be not needed. Right. I think he finds that right balance between showing what, what really is important and uh, ignoring maybe sub counts that really are not that that uh, critical. So yeah, take a look at my Twitter account, at Chris Forsick, and you'll find Hamat as well. Definitely recommend uh, following him as well. So let's see, some, some questions here.
uh, let's see, definitions um, of the corrective patterns. Okay, so what you want to do basically is when you have a, basically an ABC, all right, it could be a flat or a zigzag, all right, a flat would have basically price going sideways. A flat could be like this, right? Let's say we have a down move like this. Maybe I can use, let me go back to my presentation here. Oh, sorry about that. Let me use lines so we don't get confused by the market structure here and price. All right, so a flat. Let's say we had a great down downtrend and now it's making a correction. So a flat would basically move like this. And make an ABC sideways. All right. Now within this ABC, you will find most of the time three waves up here, three waves down, and five waves up like this. That's the formation of a flat, three, three, five. Now, what could happen is that the flat could be equal to each other like this. All right, you got a double bottom here basically and a double top. It could also be a running flat basically where uh, the, um, the, the top here gets broken, if I remember correctly. I, let me check because I always get the names mixed up, but I'll double check that. Running flat. Basically, the C part breaks the top of the A part. All right. The expanding flat is where basically the C part, the B part breaks the bottom, but slightly. It cannot go push more than 138.25. All right. If it goes beyond that, then this is an impulse wave. All right, so that's when both the bottom gets broken and the top gets broken. Now, I don't use these names too often, to be honest, so I'm not 100% sure uh, about that. As you can see, I am not the biggest theorist either. But uh, I always get them mixed up, but let me double check that. Those are, in any case, the formations that uh, price can make with flats. Uh, let's see. All right, so running flat is wave B terminates beyond the bottom. All right, so that's a running flat. We get a bottom break, basically. All right, and uh, beyond the... Uh, uh, all right, let's see, but actually it's the other way around. Let's take a bullish example quickly. Here, that would be the other way around. So in that case, we would have a bullish impulse, we would have bearish correction, we would have a bullish correction, and we have a bearish correction like this. All right, so in that case, uh, the wave B goes beyond the origin of wave A, like this. Okay, so you see it the other way around too. You can see this pushes above this, all right? Now, just a bit, once again, it cannot break above 138.2. An expanded flat wave C fails to travel its full distance. All right, falling short of the level A. So uh, um, once again, expanded flat is that if it stops here, like this, that's a expanding flat. All right, like this. 
a, a normal flat would be if price then doesn't a regular flat would be if it doesn't break the origin of, of, of A like this like that more or less sideways maybe just slightly a bit below A all right, so that's three types of flats. Um, sideways like this, running, or, sorry, this is actually, yeah, running, and this is expanding. This is running, this is expanding, and this is running. So, sorry about that. I, as you can see, this, the differences are slight, so uh, it's not that important, I think. But anyhow, this is a flat correction. The zigzag is different. In this case, we will have basically price making an upside. The correction could be a zigzag, but we would see five waves down, three wave correction up to fibs like 38.2, 50, and 61.8, and then again a five waves down. This is an ABC correction like this. All right. That is basically one correction. You could also have a triangle, obviously, where we have A, B, C, D, E. Uh, you also have basically other triangles. You have expanding triangles that would be like this, A, B, C, D, and the E can stop anywhere. So basically like this, that's incorrect, sorry. Let me do it again. Like that, that's an expanding triangle. All right, you don't see that, or megaphone, you don't see that too many times. So complex corrections are when you connect those. So let's say you have an ABC zigzag like this, all right? But price doesn't continue with the upside. You do have some upside, but it fails, and ultimately we see a new correction like this. All right, and price then stays within this part like that. Well, then we might conclude that this is the ABC zigzag, but that's only one part of the correction. We're seeing another flat or another correction, which is X. So in that case, for instance, it could be very likely that we could see another, a third part of the correction, another ABC zigzag, for instance, right? Something like that. It expands, and what we have is actually what started out as an ABC, Let's say that this is let's say that this is a, a wave A, five wave wave A. So we thought, okay, great. A B C for wave B. And now we're going up. But ultimately we see a triangle here and we see failure for price to push up. So we conclude that price needs to break above this resistance draw line for wave C to start. And if it fails and price breaks through support we're getting a complex correction. That's how we can use those trend lines to make an invalidation. Because what we don't know is whether this is wave one, this is a wave two, and we're still gonna break for wave three within that bigger C. That's also possible, all right, as you can see. That invalidation level is when price breaks, or confirmation is when it breaks. So we would put trend lines on the chart like this and say okay those are my confirmation levels let's see if it breaks it's probably wave three of c if it fails then this is probably a complex correction this is probably an abc indeed but of w this is it again an abc but of x and we're getting what's like another abc of y so it's expanding the complex correction expanding the entire thing from uh, a simple abc to still an abc probably but within a w making it WXY. All right, so let me think for a second if I want to add something. Also, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. You can look at this part to understand if that's an impulse, right? 
because, well, if it's a three-wave pattern there, then it's probably not a wave one of the wave C, right? Probably not. Uh, then it's probably actually the start of an A within a more complex correction. All right, so looking at this part can give you some information. Now what could happen is that if it's a zigzag, this could still have five waves, as that this is an ABC here, this is an ABC here, ultimately we get another ABC down. So five waves here is not a full-fledged confirmation because of this scenario where you can get WXY like this within and multiple ABCs. But it would give you some idea that more upside is likely. What is, what is really important is that price basically is breaking and confirming levels and how price responds. The difference between basically this being an uptrend or correction is how price responds here and how, how all these impulses and corrections tie together. This part, if this part, for instance, is not that impulsive, then it's probably not to wave three of C, right? Wave three have to be impulsive. So if this is corrective and is showing divergence with this top and the slow, well, that's a pretty good chance this is an ABC. And it's a good chance that therefore we're gonna make a complex correction. So this is the part most likely where more, more traders lose interest. And I can understand that. But as you can see, in, in some of these details, you can find out uh, certain things about the likelihood of, of price. And, uh, you know, what, is, uh, what could, you know, develop in the future. Gold is an example right now. Let's take a look. Any questions, by the way? I know these, this hour really flies by quickly. So that's, uh, that's a pity. Uh, we could give more examples and stuff like that. But all right, let's take a look. Uh, you see, I was, this morning I was saying that gold, I wouldn't be too trusting of this as a, a bull flag. Uh, it does look like a bull flag. And that had to do with the bigger wave structure, uh, basically, uh, that I think that the corrective part could start with the gold. Um, that is indeed happening. So we're seeing some impulse, which is putting this in a different light as well. Uh, but ultimately, yes, uh, this upside is a correction. Most likely we saw some type of correction here at least. And we'll have to see if it gets complex or not. Uh, now, it could be a start of a new uptrend. It's possible too. We don't know how this five wave will behave. What it is, is it part of A or one or, or whether that's maybe incorrect. For, for, for now, I think it is still that. Uh, this itself is a correction to here, obviously, a complex correction as well. This is a complex correction too. At this moment, it seems more likely that this is one swing, this is another swing, and now we're getting a new swing. Within that second swing, you can see here, we had a flat correction probably. So gold really speeding up. The market is really speeding up at this moment. Uh, your dollar actually got some downside this uh, today. I was a bit hesitant with that due to the momentum it did show at the start. Uh, but now it's showing an, a, a bounce. It's kind of very fluky and funky at the moment. Overall, it's just very, very corrective. Ah, Kiwi is, is indeed going fast. Your dollar is moving up. Interesting. Yeah, so anyhow, dollar yen is, is expected moving up. Your dollar is quite choppy at the moment. All right, so we can take a look tomorrow if you like. Uh, at uh, Tomorrow is a strategy webinar. Uh, give more examples if you can make it or if you want to look at the recording. I think that would make sense. If, uh, if you're interested in more info on wave analysis, take a look at admiralmarkets.com. Click, go to daily wave analysis. You just click on wave analysis and you'll see it 
you see the daily wave update in the mornings. We also have weekly wave analysis. You can sign up for that uh, by sending an email to me or to Advent Markets. We also have a wave ebook. You can sign up. Uh, there's often a banner at the bottom of the wave analysis where you can sign up. And there's also a lot of wave webinars and videos you can find on the Advent Markets YouTube channel. So, yeah, this is a topic really that we could discuss and discuss and look at different examples and look at more details about how you can understand when a complex correction is starting or continuing, invalidation corrections, there are a lot of things we can look at, but unfortunately we're running out of time. Uh, I really appreciate that uh, you took the time of being here. I think it's, it's, I'm flattered because this is my favorite topic. So I, uh, I love it that you're here. And I hope that this has helped. Uh, this is, I think, just one part of, you know, the step that you probably need to to do to get better at this. But I hope that it uh, did contribute to that. You can uh, continue with, uh, of course, the learning as, or continuation of that, uh, as I just mentioned, with these things. If you have any questions, feel free to write me an email right here, hotmail.com, Chris Horsick. And uh, while I'm excited that... Uh, that you're continuing with this journey, we're starting it, and I hope that it will make your analysis and your trading better. Thanks again, and I uh, hope to see you tomorrow. All right, folks, good trading. Cheers. <laughs>